We have a comment from Commissioner Ranzo. Is that from Mr. Russell? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Russell. I have four questions. Uh, Mr. Cronus, Commissioner Ranzo. Yeah, Chris, I want to follow up. You, you said we have, after five years, we have ways to uh, get property, et cetera, if they don't meet their commitments. Yes. What part of the contract is that in? If you take a look at the place where the exhibits will appear, yes, that includes a mortgage on the property. Um, it includes a security agreement on the property. Yes. Um, it includes life insurance policy uh -huh. on a uh, key officer of the company, um, and all of those are referenced in the uh, in the document itself. Do we have those security agreements? No. Why, why not? Well, as I said, the document is still being reviewed and tweaked by the lawyers, and that's they, they will be added at the end. Well, but you said this is going to be approved in substan substantially the same form. That's I mean, right. We have several exhibits here that have nothing in them, the, and this is a significant portion of this contract, is it not? <clears throat> Is not the security agreement a significant portion of this contract for us as the county? Well, I, I would suggest to you that the remedies that are contained on page 9 that reference those exhibits um, provide the information that, that uh, is required for approval of the agreement. That tells, uh, tells us how the county is protected. And additionally, by the way, in section three on page four of the agreement. So you're telling me we don't need copies of the security agreement, the mortgage, anything like this? Well, that's a judgment for you to make, but my answer to that would be no. Well, I certainly disagree. I mean, this, this, this agreement clearly is incomplete and premature at this time. I mean, we may have some disagreements about whether or not we should be doing forgivable loans, but I do appreciate that there's been some efforts to try and solidify the clawback provisions, et cetera. But before we approve something like this, we need to have all the information. We need to have the security agreement in front of us. So I have some concerns in that regard, as well as some other concerns. But all for now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Mr. Chase, would you like to make a comment? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and Commissioners. Um, the document that we're using is designed to be uh, an offer to the company. Uh, a company is, is uh, negotiating with us. This is not a done deal. And so we've, we've attempted to put into this document what our, our best offer is. And one of the pieces of this is the addition, as Mr. Cronus has said, to uh, ask the company for a form of security so that in the event uh, the company's performance is subpar, we have more than just a, a promise to repay you. We have a, a, a um, lien on tangible assets. The document is designed to provide some flexibility, okay? Uh, you would normally get one of those four uh, uh, demonstrations of security that are listed in there, not, not all four. Uh, and that's a point of negotiation. Will the company agree to securitize this agreement or will they not? A and, and that is yet to be determined. So if we brought to you a final document that was executed by both parties, it would, it would be an automatic. They're going to do it. It's, it's a done deal. And this document gives us the ability to negotiate in a public setting with uh, the governments and the company. Does that help uh, address your, your questions about why a mortgage, why a uh, insurance policy, um, why a um, guarantee, corporate guarantee, or not in the document today? Well, I understand what you're saying, but, but, I mean, you just, 
to basically, I mean, you said it's not a done deal. So we're being asked to approve something. This won't come back before us again. That's up to uh, uh, your legal uh, counsel uh, and, and the commissioner's decision. Well, I think it, it's been made very clear that it's, you know, they, they consider this actually <laughs> the same form, and we don't even know if they're going to agree to a security agreement, but Mr. Cronin says we have that guarantee for five years, when in fact we don't have it. So we might approve this and might not end up get any guarantee or any way to, uh, to, uh, to hold this for the, for the full 10 years. The, the, the remedies and the language in the contract is very specific today that says that there's an obligation for 10 years for the company to uh, reimburse the, the city and the county uh, for uh, funds that are dispersed if in the event they don't perform and then there's punitive damages on top of that depending on how how poorly they uh, might perform as an example if they were to uh, close their doors uh, and so that's all written in the document today uh, and if that were to change uh, as you might suggest I think Chris's comment was substantially the same way if that was to change I would going to say that's not substantially the same and would have to come back before you. The last piece of it was that um, we're doing a five-year abatement for 100 percent. That's a little bit different. Um, the company, Chris said the company asked for that. Quite frankly, the company asked for a 10-year 100 uh, percent. And we said no. We can't do that because in doing that, we would not be able to maintain uh, the, the uh, policy that you have set up for a return on the investment. So this is not a, um, we're just handing the company everything that they've asked for. Any other questions? Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. well, well, we have a question here from Commissioner Peter okay. Jones. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, Tim, and I'll, I'll leave this open for any of the other folks who've testified, and I appreciate it appreciate y'all coming down and discussing your perspective on this issue that's in front of us this morning um, I, I look at this and I think you know, all the language I'm seeing this is a five-year agreement would you agree with me on that point uh, no I, I don't think I, I would I believe that the the date is not put into to the document because it is the way it's written it says on the maturity date and the maturity date is so many years past the execution date. Well, we don't know when the execution date is, so therefore I can't have a maturity date. So that, that date is not in the document today. But it's designed to be a 10-year obligation, not a five-year. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you adding that distinction and point because we obviously had some discussion on it this morning. I was a little bit surprised. I've got a Wichita Eagle article from May 9th this year announcing and basically uh, talking about Fijiac has plans to grow in Wichita. Uh, basically said that they purchased a Wichita company, Sonica, and uh, and that they were going to, was basically the, the, the office that they, the building they'd acquired uh, uh, was renamed Fijiac Aero North America and its desire to make Wichita its North American headquarters. And uh, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this name, but in this article, the first vice president of Fijiac Aero, uh, vice president of business development, um, and please help me out if I'm wrong here, Hossein ben Benu? Mm -hmm. Beno? Beno? Uh, my, <laughs> my French isn't very good, but basically he's quoting here in terms of saying at that time the heart of Fijiac North America will be in Wichita and and uh, they've made your customers here um, I was I had the privilege earlier this week of visiting a, another uh, supplier to some of the major aircraft companies here in town um, actually not actually the company I was visiting was not in Sedgwick County but it's not too far away and they were talking about how basically they needed physical proximity to be close to to, to be close to their customers and I think that was a key criteria for their location in South Central Kansas where they were at and I looked at Fijiac as a machine shop being the same way so um, since I've got a news article 
kind of announcing the corporate headquarters back in May. Is this old news? I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and let him share what his um, opinion of that is, but, but I would say that since that time there have been two plant managers uh, and, and a tremendous amount of um, change in uh, what was thought to be in May the, the course of action, not the least of which was brought about by um, a consultant that was uh, hired by the company and asked what is the standard incentive package that I should um, ask for? What is the standard? Uh, and the standard is 10 years. And when we came back and said no, five years is what we're offering with some cash in, uh, in addition. Quite frankly, uh, Mr. Millard told me that he said, all right, that starts the clock over. We're going to begin looking at other locations. And with regard to your proximity comment, um, their, their customers are in North Carolina, and they would be pr uh, closer to one of their customers is in North Carolina, and they would have proximity there. So they chose a specific location that they would be considering uh, for this facility. Well, I, I understand Spirit's got facilities in North Carolina just like we have here. Just this article talked about at that time, you know, they were planning to hire 175 people in the next, next 15 to 24 months, so that would have been roughly six months ago, half a year ago, so that uh, subtracting, you know, nine to, nine to 18 months was, was part of the plan according to the, the Siegel article. Okay, thank you. Thank you, you Commissioner. Wanna... Anything else? I think not, thank you. Okay. Mr. Cronus, I have uh, just a couple questions. Um, I know that the state is pretty guarded about their involvement in economic development initiatives, but is the state also uh, participating here? I suspect they are, but they will not tell us. And has the city council already uh, approved their participation? No. No. Um, they will approve it after the, the first of the year, um, in part because of the holiday schedule, uh, but also because since the city will be the entity that uh, is authorizing the tax abatement, uh, the company has two choices in how they obtain that tax abatement, uh, either through the issuance of industrial revenue bonds, which would be issued by the city, or through the award of an economic development abatement under state law and my understanding is that the company hasn't yet determined uh, how it wishes to finance the improvements and therefore it doesn't know, the city doesn't know which form of tax abatement is going to be provided. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Um, I don't see anyone else asking to speak. I just make my comment that uh, I'm going to be <coughs> supportive of this. I think our efforts in economic development um, over the years that I've been aware of it and involved in it, it is clear that uh, we are looking for primary jobs, jobs that uh, are manufacturing jobs, um, jobs that uh, come to our community through uh, a company uh, who wants to sell their product not only in near proximity but also has a, a market outside the area. So I'm, um, uh, I'm thinking with the amount of investment that they're contemplating, the amount of employees that they're going to hire, um, that this fits all the goals of our economic development efforts. Um, it, it also, um, I, I think, is uh, it will have a ripple effect in our economy for our aviation industry and for all the um, associated members that produce parts and that uh, uh, have an interest in, in the aviation uh, supply chain in our area. So. To me, it seems like it's a fit for our community. Um, it seems like the, the uh, return on investment that we've calculated is, uh, it meets that threshold. And uh, to have 200 jobs and a $20 million investment in our community uh, for our $250,000 investment uh, of cash is, uh, is, is worthy of our support. And so I'm going to support the, uh, the item here. Commissioners, is there other <coughs> comment? What's the will of the board? 
Mr. Chairman, I move we adopt the resolution. I'm sorry, I ask the chair to sign. Second. And we have a motion and a second, and we have discussion from Commissioner Ranzo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I, I, I uh, share some of the same concerns that Commissioner Peter John had about the article. Um, and uh, clearly they've already bought a company here and they're hiring and they have plans to be here. Um, you have the but for argument. Uh, I'm not sure that passes in this particular case. By my calculations, if the average salary was reduced by 12 cents an hour, then they could recover the $250,000 in five years. So that shows you just how I don't think this uh, $250,000 has to be a deal, break, deal breaker at all. But beyond that, the, my biggest concern is this contract that we're being asked to approve. It's incomplete. And, you know, <coughs> paragraph three that you alluded to, Chris, uh, it points to all the exhibits that we don't have. Uh, so our, so we're lacking a lot of things here from the commission. I think. Um, I think it would be prudent for this. I think we're going too fast, and this is premature. Clearly, the city of Wichita hasn't approved this yet. There's still some negotiating going on. I think we need to hold off on this until we have more details. We have information. We actually have the security agreement and all the stuff we're supposed to have, and, and they've ironed out all the details with the city of Wichita. Let's not rush into this and be premature. I'm not sure why we would want to do that. So I'll make a substitute motion that we table this issue until such time negotiation with the city of Wichita being completed and we have a more complete document for us to uh, consider. I'll second that motion. Thank you. We have a substitute motion and second. Uh, Commissioner Peter John, do you have discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will briefly comment on, on the substitute motion uh, that I seconded because um, many of the concerns I expressed uh, in the questions of the folks who are here and uh, Mr. Cronus uh, are, are part of this, and uh, uh, and I, I think we've we've got the cart in front of the horse. So I will be supporting the substitute motion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the substitute motion? Seeing none, we will vote on the substitute motion to defer. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Commissioner Ranza. Aye. Commissioner Skelton. No. Commissioner Norton. No. Chairman Unruh. No. Substitute motion fails, so we still have an underlying motion on the table to um, adopt the resolution. Uh, is there further discussion? Uh, Commissioner Franzo. Well, obviously, I don't have to not be supportive of this motion. I can't support approving an incomplete document, and I'm disturbed that uh, a majority of this commission is prepared to do so. I don't believe that's good policy. I don't believe that's good government. Um, you wouldn't do it in the private sector. But I guess this is what they mean when they say you can't run the government like a business. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Peter John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to um, quote another elected official who said, well, you've got to pass the document to find out what's in it. Um, the concern I have with this issue, and I'm going to not try and repeat points that I've early, earlier made, but try and add a couple of things that I don't think have gotten the attention that they deserve. Um, first off, uh, we've got the study in front of us from uh, CEDBR, and uh, they quite carefully say that they're not, the numbers that they use are basically the numbers that the company provided, and so uh, they have kind of put a qualification on them for there that always makes me, I mean, that's standard, but it's it's a concern all the time that I'm there. And I'll put it in this context. Uh, the discussion is, is this is going to be a corporate headquarters, but the jobs that we're talking about here are going to pay an average of less than $40,000 a year, albeit almost 40000 but less than that. And I'm thinking corporate headquarters. Most of the corporate headquarters I'm aware of, uh, the job levels uh, are, are larger than that. Now, having said that, uh, the information I've been able to find about FIGIAC is the same as we had a discussion with an American company a couple weeks ago, and even though this proposal's in terms of <coughs> benefits is about a little over two and a half times larger than the one that I voted against a couple weeks ago, uh, they're a fine company. Uh, I'm glad they decided to purchase on their own back uh, earlier this year and acquire property and uh, acquire a Wichita company, and uh, 
uh, make plan publicly announced plans to expand here. Uh, welcome to the competition, but our our role as elected officials is to basically provide a, a fair and level playing field. And uh, there's been a lot of community discussion on this. Uh, I, I look at uh, how the voters have handled issues in 2012 and just last month. And so my votes today, Mr. Chairman, are going to re reflect that fact. And uh, um, and I, I share the reservations. I would make the point there was some discussion about the company perhaps going someplace else internationally, and that's certainly their prerogative. But let me share this. Uh, well, we've certainly struggled with the rule of law here in the United States in the last few years uh, overseas. Um, it's been much worse. And uh, when I look at our neighbors to the south and look at where the people are voting with their feet, where they're trying to move to and not where they're going, where they're coming from, um, I think that that still indicates that if you really want to pursue the American dream, uh, the United States is a lot better than uh, many, many other options that are out there. So my vote today is going to be in support of a level playing field for all, economic development for all. I'm going to publicly support the governor's tax policies because I think that their loca the location of this company and the expansions by other firms in the, in the industry as a result of uh, what he's put in place with his policies. But having said that, uh, the proposal we have in front of us is incomplete. And, uh, and since we're still struggling in terms of can't even figure out for sure whether we're talking about a five or 10 year or some other date, because the date's not specified, as was pointed out, uh, my vote today is going to reflect those facts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, com uh, Mr. Cronus, is there, um, in your opinion, are we exposed to any liability from some of the lack of detail that uh, the commissioners have referenced? This agreement uh, sets up the <coughs> parameters for our making um, an economic development incentive with this company. and. Uh, those numbers won't change. Are there other details that might create uh, some significant hazard for us? Uh, not that I'm aware of, and I believe that's that's uh, why you have the protection of the county councilor approving the final form of the agreement before I can execute it. All right, thank you. Well, I, I will uh, continue to reiterate the fact that this is uh, an opportunity for us to attract uh, and headquarters here from an international company going to put $20 million worth of investment in our community, not in Louisiana or Mexico or North Carolina or wherever. We're going to get 200 jobs. Um, this, these are jobs that our community typically responds to. They're well-paying jobs. And um, this is an opportunity for us to have um, a win, not just in the competitive nature of it, but a win for our community. And so I'm going to continue to be supportive. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Peter John. No. Nope. Commissioner Ranza. No. Commissioner Skelton. <coughs> Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Chairman Enru. Aye. Motion thank you. carries. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you for all the representatives from the Chamber and GWDC and um, Mr. Russell. Thank you for being here.